These entitled parents are about to sue this school because their son wasn't allowed to use the bathroom. But wait until you hear what crazy thing the kid did in class that will completely turn the tables. Happy birthday, today's your birthday and on with the revamped show. My wife used to be an English teacher at a middle school with a German name, in a school district with a German name, in a North Houston suburb. If I remember correctly, this happened back in January of 2012. We got married in February 2012. As I said, my wife was a middle school English teacher, and she had this kid in her class that we'll call Dale, as in the Disney characters Chip and Dale. He was in her class right after lunch. One day right after lunch, Dale is sitting at his desk with a bottle of water out on his desk. My wife tells him to put it away, because it is against the rules. Texas schools are strict, and I guess some kids have brought in vodka pretending it is water. Instead of putting the bottle away, Dale chugs all of the water and puts the bottle under the desk. Pretty soon after, he asks if he can go to the bathroom. My wife tells him that he should have gone during lunch or during the passing period. A few minutes pass before he asks to go again. Again, my wife says no. He then asks if he can just pee in the bottle. My wife says, absolutely not. If you need to go that bad, you can go, but it won't be excused. He won't get a hall pass, but he could still go if he needed to that badly. The kid stops asking. Towards the end of the class, there is a lot of chatter going on. Then my wife asks what is going on. Someone says it smells like pee. Another kid blurts out that Dale peed in the water bottle. Sure enough, Dale produces the water bottle, now full of pee. My wife sends him to the principal's office. At first, Dale is in big trouble. The principal and the district are talking about suspension, alternative school, and possibly involving the police because he was wearing regular cut jeans and obviously pulled his under uh, <laughs> the desk to pee into the bottle. Dale's parents send their kids to a urologist to try and claim that not excusing him to use the restroom has caused physical damage and threatened to sue the school. Dale's scumbag parents, the father had thrown a water bottle at the principal before and they've had other incidents, buy this lie and that he somehow worked the bottle up his leg pants all the way to his crotch so that he could pee into the bottle without exposing himself and miraculously didn't spill any on his pants, all while sitting at his desk. The parents have their lawyer go on the air on local shock jock Michael Berry's radio show, once again spreading the lie of how this innocent kid was amazing for peeing in a bottle completely within his pads, and how horrible my wife, though they didn't name her on the radio, was for not excusing him to leave class. They also blatantly lied and claimed my wife said she hoped he would pee in his pants. Other students confirmed to the principal that she never said this. The school district does a complete 180 and starts turning the screws on my wife. They call her in to meet with the superintendent and refuse to allow her to bring up any union representation. Unions are powerless in Texas. She was given the choice to resign and run out the rest of the year in teacher purgatory. They report to a room full of other teachers and basically sit there all day. Or to be fired. She signed whatever NDA and took the resignation option. It was a major downer right before our wedding. But she ended up teaching at an IB school with expat kids for a year or two before our oldest was born. I got a new job making more money to make up the difference and now my wife has given up ever going back to teaching. She's earned her masters in the hope of becoming a principal one day. I think the parents ended up transferring Dale to another school. We looked into suing the parents and Dale for libel and slander, but they had already gone to basically every lawyer in town and discussed the case which barred them from being able to represent my wife. Also, it's not cheap to get a decent lawyer to sue one for libel and slander. <laughs> wow, it really shows you the power of the media, doesn't it? Everyone was on the teacher's side until the media blew it up and made the kid seem like the biggest victim in the world. The teacher even said if he really had to go, he could leave the classroom, just that he wouldn't have her permission. He totally seems like one of those kids that just does this sort of thing for attention. But how the heck could somebody get a bottle up their pants and then not pee their pants at all during that process? That just, it doesn't seem possible. 
my mom, MM, and I were going to get supplies only to find that the toilet paper section has been picked clean. Not a big deal, we didn't have high hopes anyway. We wander over to the checkpoint when we suddenly spot EM. EM and son have two, two shopping carts absolutely filled with toilet paper. One hand pushing the cart and the other holding her iPhone gossiping away. Now, it is important to mention that my mother is unusually an anxious, quiet woman. Living as a Chinese-speaking immigrant in a white American neighborhood, she has gotten even more nervous due to the virus. However, realizing that the woman is also jabbering on the phone in Chinese, her face lights up. My mom in Chinese. Hello miss, I wish you a happy new years. It's so nice to see you in our community. I'm sure you didn't get a chance to see, but there is a one toilet paper package per customer. Easy mistake, but let us band together to work hard for our community. We must take care of each other. EM, not bothering to put down the phone, just basically yells, Huh? You're talking to me? Mind your own business, B. If you're too stupid to take advantage, don't whine. Don't pretend we're friends just because you're too fat to waddle your way over to the toilet paper aisle. EM proceeds to gently shove our cart with hers and cut in front of us in line. At this point, my mom is flushed with embarrassment and quietly shuffles into the long checkout line. Approximately 45 minutes later, EM reaches checkout. The overworked clerk just sighs. Ma'am, there is a two per people rule. I'm afraid I'm gonna have to ask you to put them all back and get to the back of the line. What? Says who? There aren't any signs anywhere. No one says anything. If you have a rule, tell people. Don't just make it up and cheat your paying customers. Cashier just sighs and begins to take her carts away, much to EM squawking. He starts waving the customers in line over to scavenge from the pile. My mom shuffles over a bit. She looks EM dead in the eye and without blinking, plucks the shiniest toilet paper roll of the bunch. In a stroke of either pettiness or awkward politeness, my mom says as a common Chinese New Year's phrase, May peace bring wealth to you. We quickly scuttle away from EM's wrath with her prized toilet paper. To this day, my mom denies any sort of pettiness sentiment and simply states she was being polite to a neighbor. You know what they say, kill him with kindness, boys. Kill him with kindness. I think that can be so true though with an entitled parent. If you respond really emotionally and angrily, yeah, you're gonna feed the troll. They're only gonna get stronger and that's playing their game. Sometimes the best course of action is just to be polite and kind back if you can't just ignore them completely. This story takes place during my freshman year of high school. Here's the cast. EK, guess. S1, Senior 1, guy was in senior year during my freshman year. S2, Senior 2, the only other percussionist senior that year. BD, Band Director. EP, again, no brainer here. So when I was in high school, I was in the school band and was a percussionist. This is important because unlike the rest of the band, BD recognized that the percussion section had probably the best group of people for learning on their own. So we got to practice at our own, usually much faster, pace in the choir room, which was attached to the band room and had a thing set up that was essentially a seven foot long practice pad, a plank of wood wrapped in a carpet. What can I say, that's Kentucky for you, that we could play and learn our parts on. However, there was one kid who was in my year who thought he could get away with freaking anything because his mother was one of the two vice principals of the school. He was also a complete piece of crap that I hated dealing with. As he insulted my then girlfriend constantly, made fun of other people of their weight, despite him being rounder than the gosh darn Pillsbury Doughboy, and one time straight up sucker punched me in the back of the head after a science class for having the gall to tell him off and saying I was done with his crap. This is EK. And my luck being what it is, EK was also a percussionist in the band. What made it worse though is that he was terrible at it and never freaking practiced. And this, this one detail, is what really got on the nerves of the two seniors that year, who both acted as co-section leaders for us percussionists. Getting the right parts and the right number of parts for us from BD, legitimately helping those who needed it with their parts because of complicated things that would sometimes show up in our sheet music and were honestly pretty darn good percussionists overall to boot. This is notable because our school was known for its band 
Ever since the director, who was there when I got hired, we had always been one of the top school bands in the region. And these two seniors, they were some of the best percussionists to come out of that program at the time. So one day, about halfway through our semester, Senior One had gotten completely fed up with this kid's refusal to practice his parts. It gets to the point where he, almost yelling after trying to get him to learn and play his actually very easy parts for our winter concert, looked at this kid and said, Why are you even here in this band? If you aren't going to practice your darn part! And EK just chooses the exact freaking wrong thing to say. He looks S1, a very talented and skilled percussionist, in the eye and says, I took band because I wanted an easy A, and I chose percussion because it doesn't take any actual skill or talent. Now, it's a common joke that percussion is the easiest group of musical instruments to learn, and that all percussionists and drummers are the dumb ones of any band. But intrinsically, every musician who makes those jokes know they don't mean them, as while it is the easiest family of instruments to learn and to start playing, it also has one of the highest differences between a novice and someone with even middling skill, let alone high-level percussionists like those who play in orchestras professionally. And S1? <laughs> well, S1 was absolutely freaking done with this kid's crap, and was definitely the most skilled percussionist in that room. And he goes the frick off. For about the next 20 minutes, he ranted and yelled at EK. There's no way in heck I could even try to reconstruct the full amount of what was said, but there are a few notable moments from it that are burned into my memory with how freaking funny it was to watch from the outside. At one point, he takes the drumsticks he had in his hand and says, I want you to freaking watch this. Starts what was a fairly difficult rudiment for most of the people there at a tempo of about 35 to 40 BPM and holds that speed for about 25 seconds for the purposes of demonstration. Do you really think that didn't take skill or talent of any freaking kind? Well, you just practiced that until you could do it. <laughs> what the frick do you think skill is? This continued for a little while until S1 finally had to pause to catch his breath a bit. So EK, who thinks he can get a word in edgewise, is just about to speak and try to appeal to the idea of my mum will hear about this or something to that effect. When S2, the absolute freaking legend, stops him by interjecting his own little tidbit. He doesn't give a crap who your mummy is. After chewing this kid out for the next few minutes, S1 goes and has a word with BD. Turns out this had been a coming storm for about two to three weeks, and S1 had arranged with BD to at least get EK out of the percussion section if he disrespected it or the band again. Suffice to say, by the end of that class period, EK was no longer a percussionist in our band. And by the end of the week, band director had talked with the school's principal and had him removed from the band class entirely. I later found out that EP initially tried to step in and make the administration play favorites because S1 had yelled at her precious little boy. But the principal overrode her authority and pointed out that EK had disrespected the band which is one of the main enticements for fundraisers for the school, thanks to our skill and a once yearly gala arranged by the band that was the biggest amount of non-government funding brought into the school each year. Needless to say, her idea didn't get much traction outside of that little conversation either. Man, thank goodness that that vice principal isn't the principal. Can you imagine? She would just bring that school completely to the ground. They'd have this amazing music program and it'd all be destroyed simply because of her precious little angel. Recently, I held a game of bingo through Zoom for a couple of my college friends. I sent them PDFs of their specific sheet so they could print it out while I call out the numbers. The call starts and I'm waiting for one friend. Let's call them Noob, <laughs> sorry bud, to join. Suddenly Noob's mum, NM, joins. We all ask her where Noob was and she replies that he couldn't make it but asked her to take his place in case they won something. Keep in mind, I had three different prizes. One was a $100 Steam gift card for a blackout, while I had two $50 Steam gift cards for the four corners and a row or column filled. We started and we're all laughing and having a great time. After I called a few numbers, NM says that she got four corners. So I ask her to scan it and send it over to me so I could double check. Sure enough, it's all good and everyone is just in awe of how she got that lucky. 
We continue onwards and after a couple more numbers, NM once again says that she got a complete row. Everyone is in complete awe yet again, as it's all good once again. It looked a bit different, but I just passed it off as me seeing things and her being lucky. We continue on yet again, and as expected, around 10 to 20 numbers later, NM says she got a blackout. At this point, everyone is just suspecting foul play because there's literally no freaking way. I decide to compare the scans to one another, and sure enough, they're different. She had edited it as I was calling numbers in order to print it out all perfectly. In hindsight, I should have seen this earlier, but I was a bit negligent and failed to notice it. I immediately tell her to get the frick out of the Zoom call because I won't allow cheaters. She starts yelling back that her little angel needs those. You should just give them to him, he's your friend. I kick her out of the call and the Zoom call is just exploding. I shoot a message to Noob telling him what happened since I know he wouldn't have put his mum up to that. He tells me he was working on some assignment and couldn't come. He had told his mum he had just wanted those cards to get some new games, but it was alright. His mum had told him she could participate and that she would do her best. He thought nothing of it and just worked on his assignment. Apparently he went up and asked his mum if she cheated. She denied it, but eventually admitted it and they got into a yelling fest. I ended up doing a random picker for the two $50 codes and the game just continued on. I'm honestly surprised people will do all that just for some Steam gift cards. Also, her execution was terrible and she didn't even try to hide it. What kind of a mum steals Steam gift cards from her kids' friends? What on earth was going on through her mind? Hmm, my kids got this assignment, but you know, I don't want him to miss out. I know, I'll just cheat and steal from his friends. I'm the best mom in the world. Except no, no you're not because now your son doesn't trust you. Submit your story to be read on the channel at voiceyhearstories at gmail.com and join our Voicey Veteran community at r slash voiceyhear. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that bell to never miss an episode. Alright Voicey Veterans, I'll see you in the next one.